Hi all of you out there. In today's video, I'm going to uh, take you through uh, how I would set up a mix template based on my current workflow while mixing with the uh, Reaper. But first, uh, like many other uh, freelancers, I've been hit really hard by the situation caused by the coronavirus. Over the last year or so, the bulk of my income has been through uh, live gigging as a musician. And the way it is now here in Norway is I can't work. And this has caused my income to uh, drop to about nil. This is something I don't want to do. But if there's anyone out there that can help a little with uh, either donating, buying my music, or hire me for mixing or um, remote uh, recording work, that is something that I would greatly appreciate. I'll be leaving uh, a bunch of links in the description for this video. Anyways, now we can get on to building our template. And to explain the whole workflow thing, uh, what I do with my mixing template is basically a bunch of uh, nested folders. As that's the easiest way to route things in uh, Reaper. And I typically don't use the master fader for anything. Just passing all your through it. So what I start out with is a pre-master uh, that I call the mix bus. Everything goes through this one and then into the master fader. And on the master I typically only have the meter uh, plugins. So we can start with that. For that one, I used the Clangon VUMT Deluxe, the Yulian Loudness Meter 2. This is a free plugin. And the cool thing uh, it has is uh, LUFS uh, metering. This is, this is handy for uh, when you mix and master for uh, streaming. And also, there's a BX meter from Plugin Eyelines. This one has a few more features like a face correlation and uh, things like that. Apart from that, I won't be using any plugins in this template. This is mainly a clean slate uh, template. Alright, we now have the mix bus uh, track here. And after that, I have uh, submix buses for uh, the different instrument groups. Drums, low end, guitar and keys, vocals and effects. So that's a 5-1. And then I turn the mix bus track into a folder track. So that the submix track are already routed. Every track that ends up in a mix here will be going through these submixes and then into the mix bus uh, fader. Now let's uh, color these. I like to use the red for the mix bus. And blue for the submixes. But um, choose what color you like. Now let's add uh, the folders that will go underneath these uh, submixes. That one for drums, low end. That's both the uh, bass guitar and uh, various bass synths and uh, things like that. Guitars, keyboards or synths, or whatever you want to call it. Lead vocal, and backing vocals. We can add another uh, track here. Call out SFX, that's in case you have any 
samples or other special effects that you want added. Not very often I use that, but um, it depends on the genre you're working in. And now, what we do is route these to the submix buses further up. But here's where you need to be careful. As it is now, this folder track is now going two places. Both the drums level fader and the mix bus. So what we need to do is untick the parent set. That way you uh, avoid double routing. We can use the routing matrix for the rest of them. Untick these ones. Then see guitars. That should be going here. Git keys level. Same thing with the keyboards. Leave vocals and backing vocals to the vox level. And this one to effects. This is a really easy way of doing it. Especially if you have a lot of tracks. A good visual uh, to confirm that your routing is right is if these only show the yellow line there. If it has a green one, it goes to the parent. I like to use a green on the drums, a brown on the low end, fairly bright blue on the guitars, Keyboards are purple because John Lord typically use a bright yellow on the vocals, more bright orange on uh, the backing vocals. Let's see what we can use on the um, special effects. Let's try that one maybe. And then we're going to add some uh, aux return uh, tracks. These are for uh, reverbs and delays, and modulation. So I think I'll add about six tracks there. And for that, I like to use a pink color. Very often I'll use uh, three verbs. Usually one for the drums, a general reverb for the other instruments and one for the vocals. One for a slap delay, one for a longer, and one that I usually reserve for uh, any modulation effects. Just like the special effects folder, we're also going to be sending this to the effects level fader. All our main folders are now routed. We can now save that as a project template. And I'll save this as a blank one. Insert the tracks we're going to be needing. Select all these tracks and drag them up here. For some reason, I haven't found a way to drag them directly onto this from the Explorer. But this is a, an okay workaround. And quite often, within this folder, I'll have new folders again. So let's say we have one for the kicks. One for snares. One 
One for the overheads. One for the toms. And one for the room tracks. So that's pretty much uh, how I do things. The aim is uh, when you get towards the end of the mix is use as few faders as possible. So normally when it's time to start uh, doing automation and, and things like that, the only faders I'll be using are these six for a level. And otherwise it's usually automating aux uh, sense. And when you're done with um, tweaking the individual tracks, you can just collapse the folder of you. Or just hide the tracks that you uh, don't need. I think I'm going to save this now. And I'll do uh, another video later on with the uh, plugins I tend to use on it. But anyways, hope that was helpful and that this is uh, something you can use in your own new workflow. If you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing. Until next time, have a great one, and stay safe.